Clearly, introns are not necessary to the function of a messenger RNA. Bacterial genes don't have any. What's more, intronic DNA is often much longer than the exons of a gene, implying perhaps a lot of wasteful DNA that has no apparent function. So why do introns exist at all in eukaryotic cells? Or why, if they were present in the first cells, were they retained by eukaryotes and lost in prokaryotes? Well, let's recall protein domains and protein families. The existence of introns permits easy recombination of exons, resulting in a movement or a shuffling of exons in and out of genes that didn't have these sequences before. By this mechanism, proteins could rapidly acquire new domains and thereby new functions. Today, we can see a relationship between many exons and the structural and functional domains that they encode in polypeptides. Here is a generic example of exon recombination or exon shuffling initiated by unequal crossing over between two different genes. First, we need to understand that crossing over, both equal and unequal, are common events in eggs and sperm, or during the development of eggs and sperm. Most of the time, we do not see the damaging consequences since the organisms don't survive. But recombination within introns increases the probability of survival of unequal recombinant organisms. After unequal crossing over, exon C in this example is now part of a gene that previously only had two exons, A and B. This is now a three exon gene. A three exon mRNA is made by splicing and a protein then with a new domain will be translated. The recombination event could have occurred almost anywhere within the non-coding that is the intron DNA. This imprecision makes the occurrence of these recombinations more likely than not, allowing rapid gene and protein evolution.